Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to another lecture. Uh, this one is all about the difference between rational and irrational numbers, as you can see by the title, R irrational numbers. Uh, this is again part of the fourth unit, Roots and Powers. Um, so let's check out our document. Um, rational numbers can be written in the form of a fraction where a and b are integers and the decimal representation either ends or has a repeating pattern. So uh, any numbers that can be written as a fraction or a decimal that will stop on your uh, calculator or repeat on your calculator um, is a rational number. So examples of rational numbers, uh, something like three over 10 is a rational number. It is a fraction, it can be written as a fraction. Um, let's see, four is a rational number. Six over nine uh, is a rational number. And if you punch that into your calculator, you'll see that it's 0.6 repeating. So anytime you have a number that is repeating, that is okay. Uh, something like 304 over 999 gives you a decimal of 0 0.304 and that repeats over and over again this way. Uh, that is a rational number. As soon as you get some random uh, set of numbers uh, that goes off the screen of your calculator with no discernible pattern, then that is an irrational number. So irrational numbers cannot be written in the form of a fraction a over b and the decimal representation never ends and does not repeat. So some examples of that are pi, right? Some of you might know that pi is 3.14, but might, you might not know that pi is actually 3.14152965.4, and then it continues forever? We don't really know. It goes on for as long as any computer has ever been able to calculate it for. So that is an irrational number. Uh, if you type in the root of 2 into your calculator, you're going to get a decimal that goes on forever. That is an irrational number. Same with the cube root of 7 and anything uh, that can't be written as a fraction um, is an irrational number. So if we go down to the bottom here, we've got this interesting picture. And I know we can't get it all on the screen, but we'll, um, we'll work with it. So in the large box, as a set of the entire like set of all the numbers that are possible, these are the irrational numbers. Okay, Irrational numbers exist outside um, and everything else is within it. So within the set of numbers, um, we have what we call rational numbers. So rational numbers um, are like all the decimals and the fractions. Um, and all decimals and fractions. Within that, we have integers. And integers are like solid numbers that are positive or negative, like minus three, minus two, minus one, zero, one, two, three. Within that, oh my goodness, I don't know if I'm gonna make it. We have whole numbers. And that would be 0, 1, 2, 3. And then within that, oh, I got to draw an arrow. Shoot. Within that, we have natural numbers. And that is just whole numbers uh, without the 0. So that would be like 1, 2, and 3. So we call these subsets. Um, natural numbers are a subset of whole numbers. And whole numbers are a subset of integers. So. Um, as we get larger and larger, we get to make up the entire set of all possible numbers. That's what the box represents. Um, we are going. We are differentiating in this lesson between irrational and rational numbers. So rash, irrational are all the ones on the outside, and rational includes all of these. Natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, and all decimals that repeat, and fractions. Um, let's get into some classifying here. The next thing wants you to classify the following numbers as rational or irrational. Um, so we can take negative three fifths, and I know that that's a decimal, right? That is 
negative 0.6. So that is a rational number. Um, the root of 14, uh, if you punch that into your calculator, like I don't know what else to do with that. You punch that into your calculator, you get a whole bunch of decimals. That one is irrational. If we look at root of 49 over 16, um, because we can represent that as a um, fraction, right? I can take the root of 49 and the root of 16 to get 7 over 4. That is a rational number. If I have the cube root of 8 over 27, the exact same thing. I know what the cube root of 8 and the cube root of 27 is. That's 2 over 3. Makes that a rational number. We have 0.478. So the rule was if it's a decimal and it stops, it's rational. If it kept going on forever, then it would be irrational. But this one's a rational number because it stops. And then we have the third root of negative 30. Again, I don't know what to do with that other than punch that into my calculator. I find it gets me a crazy decimal. So it is an irrational number. So you should be able to classify numbers uh, as rational or irrational. If you don't know what to do with it, essentially, it's going to be an irrational number. If it looks like something that we can work with, where we know the, the roots or the cube roots of those numbers, then we're good. But something like this, that's just impossible. Um, okay. And now we're going to use a number line to order these numbers from least to greatest. Um, we are going to do that. So. We would want to find out what each of those numbers are approximately. That should that would be our goal. So um, we could estimate each of them. The third root of 13. I know the third root of 8 and the third root of 27. Uh, this is probably like closer to the third root of 8, which is 2. So I'd say that's something like 2.3. Uh, we have the root of 18. So we know the root of 16 is 4, and the root of 25 is uh, 5. So it's probably closer to 4. This would be something like 4.2, maybe, something like that. We then have the root of 9. Well, I know what the root of 9 is. It's 3 on the dot. Excellent news. We have the fourth root of 27. OK, the fourth root. That's a little complicated. What do we know the fourth root of? Uh, well, 2 times 2 is 4, times 2 is 8, times 2 is 16. So I know the fourth root of 16. Uh, let's say we'll find out what 3 is. 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, times 3 is 81. So it's going to be between 2 and 3, uh, definitely closer to 2. Um, let's say it'll probably be like something like 2.1 maybe, something like that. It's definitely closer to, to 16 than it is to 81. And then we have uh, the third root of negative 5. So that's going to be a negative number. Uh, we know the third root of 8, and we know the third root of 1. That's kind of right in between there. So it's probably like negative 1.5, something like that. Negative 1.5. So now that we've estimated all of these, we can put them on the number line. That is shown below. I'm going to obviously draw my own. Um, Let's see. Yeah, I'll draw my own. So I have a number line here. I'm going to have my zero a little bit farther because I've got more positive numbers. So I'm going to put zero here. Uh, and then I've got two. It should be negative two. Sorry. And we've got four, six. And eight. I don't think I need to go to eight. No, I went a little far, but that's okay. So I'm going to put my first number in. Should I use a different uh, color? I'll use red. So we've gotten the root of 13, uh, third root of 13 first. I said that that was 2.3, as you can see. So 2.3, let's say it's about there. I don't really know. There we go. That is the third root of 13. Okay. We are going to add the root of 18, which I said was 4.2, so we'll say it's about there. Got the root of 18. Uh, next is the root of 9, which is 3, so I know what that one is exactly. It is 
right on the third line there between two and four. We then have the root fourth root of 27, which I said was 2.1. So 2.1, that'll be right here on this side of this dot. So that is the fourth root of 27. And then I have the negative value, uh, negative 1.5. That would be this way, 1.5, right about here. That would be the third root of negative 5. So I've placed all my numbers in the number line, and now I could very easily list them uh, yeah, from smallest to largest, uh, 3 negative um, cube root of negative 5 next one would be the fourth root of 27 then have the third root of 13 the root of 9 and the root of 18 so we can easily see them on the number line like that um, that's the lesson for today check out the problems let me know if you have any questions